Hi, this is Amy with the Free Enterprise Club. As you know, uh, the club is a fierce advocate for economic policies that treat all taxpayers fairly and equitably. That's why we often do highlights on when the government does, picks winners and losers, but that's by incentive, carve-out, giveaways. Uh, what's in common with all these policies is they change sound economic behavior and they also displace and create bubbles in the marketplace. But among all these examples of cronyism are many, many more examples of businesses who not only start, grow, and succeed without the helpful hand of government, but they also do it often in spite of government intervention or the government putting obstacles in their way. In fact, they are the vast majority of our businesses. They're truly the economic engines of our economy, both in our country and in our state. And we're with one of those businesses today. Today we're, we, we're meeting with David Tate. He's the owner of Evo Swim School, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about his business. David, tell us um, you know, why you started this business, you know, when you started it, and what kind of services you provided the community. Well, we started back in 2007, and we wanted to teach swimming lessons. Our uh, name, Evo Swim School, is short for evolutionary, where learning to swim has evolved. And we've taken a competitive background, applied it to learn to swim, been able to be successful at getting kids to swim uh, in short periods of time and, and, uh, and also to enjoy learning to swim and also the sport. That's great. Well, as you know, business ownership is really not for the faint of heart. Uh, why did you choose to be a business owner? Um, that's a good question. Uh, probably, uh, you know, economics plays a, a role in it. You're looking for ways uh, to make a living. Um, also, with my particular personality. I didn't think that I would do well in a cubicle. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with a cubicle, a cubicle but just for me, um, I needed the, um, the challenge, I guess you'd say. Uh, and that's kind of what got me started. That's great. What, uh, what's kind of been your biggest challenge? I know there's been probably a lot of them, but what, what's been most challenging? Uh, well, early on, the biggest challenge is just getting your business off the ground. When you're starting with zero uh, customers, and very limited uh, funds uh, for advertising and so on. You have to be creative. You do everything from mopping the floor to uh, teaching the swimming lessons to balancing the books. And that is the biggest challenge in the very beginning. Challenges change as you grow. And this is our second facility here. And you get exposed to uh, government and regulation. You get exposed to um, taxation uh, more than you're used to when you're starting out. And so things change. Uh, what are you most proud of that you've accomplished here at your business? You know, I'm, I'm proud of a lot of things, but um, I, I think the most, I'm, I'm proud of the people that work here and, and uh, the jobs we've been able to create. Um, we have uh, several full-time employees with, with families and, and um, my own family included that depend on this business. And we have a, a tight-knit group that works together in, in, a, in a team fashion to put a good product out there uh, for the community. And so that's probably what I'm most proud of. Well, we really appreciate your time opening up this beautiful facility. And uh, go ahead and tell people where you're located. So we have two main locations. We have a third seasonal location. Our first location is what we refer to as our North Gilbert location. It's on the northwest corner of Gilbert and Guadalupe. This is our new facility open this year in June of 2015. Uh, this is, we call this our Santan Gilbert location. This is just uh, west of Greenfield and Pecos. And then we have a seasonal location in Queen Creek off of uh, Chandler Heights uh, between Haas and Ellsworth. Great. Well, it's a beautiful facility and you do really great work for the community and we appreciate your time. Great. Thank you. There's never a shortage of rationalizations of why government treats one business differently than another. Whether that's economic development, they're chasing jobs, they feel like they have to compete with other governments, or the mantra, too big to fail. Whatever it is, these inequities really do subvert good policy to politics and special interests. And they also require the extraction of those incentives from businesses such as this. But we have the proof. The fact of the matter is, is these businesses really are the majority, the ones who do it on their own, that grow, succeed, and start, and they don't require the help of government, and they often do it in spite of government intervention. This has been a free enterprise spotlight. Until next time.